Hello guys, this is the continuation of our course series Public Economics and this is Unit 6 Local and Global Public Goods. So then there comes the Club Goods and Public Goods. So we have seen in the Public Goods case there are two dimensions, one is Excludability and Rivalness. So goods which are excludable but non rivalous they are called Club Goods. Club goods are non rivalous until at least a point where the congestion occurs. Like in initial stage, they are not rivalous. Essentially, they have zero marginal cost and are generally provided by natural monopolies. So, new members help reduce the cost of the club good, but there is an optimum size that the maximizes the benefits for the members. For example, cinema, private park, satellite, and television. You see, in each of these cases, there is a huge fixed cost and the marginal cost is keep on decreasing at least up to a certain point in each of these cases. Then there comes the global public goods. So World Bank defines global public goods as commodities, services or systems. It can be anything or system of rules or policy of a country or regime with cross-border externalities. This is important. They are important for development and poverty reduction. So any commodity service or system of government or rule which has cross-border externalities and they are important for development and poverty reduction. They are global public goods. So global public goods can be supplied in sufficient quantity only through cooperation and collective action of countries both developed and developing. So whether a good is public good or not, it depends who is the consumer and who is the decision maker for that consumption and how is the distribution of net benefits. For example, there is a war in Russia and Ukraine. The decision maker is maybe the Russia and consumption, the negative effects are mainly being borne by the Ukrainian citizens. In this case, decision maker is different than the negative effects borne by the country. And there comes the peace and security of global public goods and GPGs. So what are the functions of UN Security Council? One is the assisting countries emerging from conflict. Like it may help Ukraine Russia after the conflict or when the conflict ends. And reducing the risk of relapsing into conflict. It helps the countries to negotiate deals and without any conflict. And laying the foundation for sustainable peace and development. Then the UN is being increasingly called upon to coordinate the global fight against terrorism. It advances international peace and security through the pursuit of elimination of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction and the regulation of conventional arms. Then there comes the Global Peace Index GPI. So GPI measures the relative position of nations or regions peacefulness. GPI ranks 163 independent states and territories, uh, almost covering 99.7% of world population. So this GPI report is produced by Institute for Economics and Peace and the data collected by Economist Intelligence Unit. So GPI parameters of global peace using three broad themes. One is the level of societal safety and security, the extent of ongoing domestic and international conflict, the degree of militarization, factors of both internal militarization or the external such as military expenditure on wars and other things. So India's ranks is 136 on the basis of 2018 Global Peace Index. Next is the perspective of global public goods on environment and poverty reductions. One is environmental GPGs, other is socio-economic GPGs and third one is capacity related GPGs. Environmental GPGs like ozone layer depletion and socio-economic GPG example can be the terrorism, international trade or peace and war and then the capacity related GPGs which are like uh, intellectual property rights and knowledge and technology. Then there comes the knowledge as GPG. Is knowledge a, is a global public goods? Knowledge has only some character of public goods, which is basically it is non rivalous 
no matter how many people use one person will not affect from the use of other person so institutional hindrances such as ipr intellectual property rights or economic hindrances as the industrial secrecy are not the main obstacles in the use of knowledge the main obstacle faced by developing countries is the lack of endogenous absorptive capabilities it means the ipr or intellectual property rights are not the main problem or main obstacle in the development or use of the knowledge the main issue or main problem is that countries do not have the sufficient infrastructure to use that technology or knowledge so if a country have sufficient infrastructure for the production then there are many mnc's the mnc's which have the ipr they will come to that country for the pro and they will set up their production unit there mnc's are therefore important vehicle for the international spread of knowledge they do not necessarily manage to keep their knowledge to themselves but often act as fertilizers for skills that are picked up and further developed in host countries so if the infrastructure is there in a country and if the mnc's come to one country they will not only set up their production units there they will do r and d work and help that country in development in other areas also so that's it for this video guys see you in the next video and if there are any comments or doubts you can post it in the comment section below i will love the feedback and thank you guys